started. Hi, this is Laura from LiveVisions.com. Give me one moment while I close my daughter's door. So it's not so loud. Okay, I wanted to give you a video on the astrology houses and how they're so important. Okay, if you notice today we have so many planets going on in Aquarius and we know that Aquarius has a lot of energy but we're not all using that energy like everybody else we're not everyone is not the same right so we're going to talk about houses so when you have a planet three or more planets in one house it's called stellium stellium is three or more planets in one house right so let's look at what the houses mean Okay, so sometimes to understand this, we have to look at what the houses mean. Now, you also have to understand what the signs mean as well. And the houses can give you, here, we'll go into the houses right now. Right now. Okay, here we go. Do you see here where it says self right here? Let me, um, well, I can't really get my arrow out because it will erase this whole thing. Well, first house. It's the self. Now, this is a blank astrology wheel. Now, if you took an astrology, and I'm gonna, I might put this on my website. Here, I'm gonna open this up more. You see where it says number one. I'm an, I might put this on my website for you to print out. It's a blank astrology wheel, and if you want to learn astrology, I suggest you print this out and you fill it in. The first house is ruled by Aries. And you need to write down what the first house means, second house Taurus. And you need to write down the glyphs, too. The glyphs are the astrological symbols, okay? We'll, we'll go over those in a minute. Let me straighten this out. Let me see. All right, here we go. Make this bigger. All right, here. Okay, here we go. All right, so this, these are the houses, right? The first house is the house of self right you see it in the house number one and maybe I can grab my arrow let's see arrow. okay this right here is the first house hopefully you can see that and I don't know why it's not here I put it here can you see that there yeah <laughs> okay first house this house right here and it, the ruler is right here this line this line is the ruler okay so this house is the house of Aries right it's ruled by Mars it rules self-awareness. This is yourself, your personality, your self-expression, how people see you in the world. It's not your sun sign. It's your ascendant sign, which rules, I want to say, 80 to 90% of your chart. How do you know your ascendant sign? You look up what time you were born. Whatever time you were born in the day is going to determine your rising sign. If you don't know the time of your birth, you're not going to know your rising sign. Okay? So the timing is important for this huge and this tells us what you're dealing with when planets transit these houses okay so this is your appearance your identity how you're seen in the world is your first house right okay this right here see number two is your this is your second house right right here second house this is your worth your values your earned income right your money your possessions right this is how you bring in money we look at the ruler to the second house, and it tells us a lot about how you may bring in money in your life, right? Okay. The third, this is the third house right here. Okay, the third house is your um, networking, your communications, right? How you communicate. It also rules siblings, neighbors, cousins, aunts, uncles, and all that. Okay? This right here, this house over here, number four, fourth house is your house of home and family this is whatever you know you got to look at what sign rules this house and what planets are in it but this tells us a lot about your home life your family life and this is also the this house is also seen as the end of life as well okay all right so the fifth house is your children your creative projects your romance right this house you look at to see what kind of people do you date what kind of romantic partners you're bringing in, right? Um, this also looks at what kind of um, the types of children or how you may, uh, your first child. Fifth house is your first child, right? It can give characteristics of that first child, but it also can tell maybe how you may parent as a parent, right? 
Okay, you got to look at the sign that's in two. Your sixth house, this is your sixth house right here where the arrow is pointing. Sixth house is right here. Work. This is your work, your health, your day-to-day -day activities, right? This is also the house that's service to others. And, you know, this also can be your diet, you know, anything that you would do for health. You want to look at the sign that's in and what, what planets are in it are going to give you more information. Now, this is the house of Virgo. Virgo. Let me backtrack a little bit. Second house, first house is the house of Aries. And the, co the ruler to Aries is Mars. Second house, the ruler is Taurus. Um, the, and the, the um, sign is Venus. Third house is Gemini, and the sign is Virgo. Fourth house is Cancer, and the, the planet that rules Cancer is the moon. Fifth house is Leo, playful Leo, and the, the planet that rules Leo is the sun. Sixth house is Virgo, and the planet that rules Virgo is also Mercury, okay, just like Gemini. So, you know, Virgo, this is a sign of um, work and health and day-to-day -day activities. Now, I'm giving you the rulership of the houses. It doesn't mean that your first house is going to be Aries and all of this. Your house is, when you were born, based on the time, is going to be different, okay? But it's important to know that Aries rules that house, or Taurus rules the second house, right? All right, seventh house is Libra. Libra rules the seventh house, and it's ruled uh ruling planet is Venus. This is your relationships. This is the public, the masses. This is also the house of marriage, right? This gives me a lot of information about marriage. And if I see Saturn squaring, opposing, or in this house, it can denote divorce for the first marriage if you get married prior to 35. Your eighth house is a partner's income. It is intimacy. It is also taxes, right? It is transformation in your life, bringing something that brings in change. You want to look at planets in here, and you also want to look at what house, what, what's the ruler to this house and what sign is, you know, is ruling here, okay? This is the uh, house of Scorpio, and the ruling sign of Scorpio is Pluto, co-ruled by Mars. It also shares Mars as a co-ruler, okay? All right. So... Um, the ninth house is the house of Sagittarius, and its ruler is Jupiter, right? So this house is a house of long-distance travel, people and places at a distance. It is religion. It's philosophy. It is teaching, writing, publishing as well. It's also law, right? It is also the higher education. Right? Higher education. A lot of times if you see somebody who is Saturn here, it can mean a break in education or delays in education. This is also a second marriage partner. So if you see that the um, seventh house could be afflicted, uh, especially by Saturn, you may go to the ninth house to find out the second marriage partner, right? Okay. All right. Tenth house is your career. Tenth house is the house of Capricorn. The ruler of the Capricorn is Saturn. So the house of career, and this is how you're seen in the world, your status, right? So this is the house of status, whatever your title is in life, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, I'm an author, a writer, a teacher. This is your title in life, right? Your career status and your purpose. So we want to look at planets here, and we want to look at the sign that's ruling this house based on your natal astrology chart. The 11th house is the house of Aquarius, ruled by Uranus. It's co-ruled by Saturn. And this house is a house of friends, groups, and organizations, right? This is the house of what kind of friends you're going to have in your life. What kind of groups or organizations are you going to be affiliated with, right? If you see um, Jupiter here, it could bring abundance of friends, you know, unless Jupiter is retrograde. Um, if it brings Saturn, if you see Saturn here, you may not have a lot of friends, but you may the friends you do have may be very a long time. You've had them a long time, right? So you want to look at that. Now, this is the house of Pisces. Twelfth house is the house of Pisces. It is the house of the self-undoing. It is also the secretive, private, behind-the-scenes house, right? It rules jails, hospitals, and prisons. It also rules solitude. So, this is the twelfth house. Pisces is ruled um, by Neptune, and it's co-ruled by Jupiter, okay? So, um, you want to look at that, okay? So, when we're looking at astrology... All right, let's just put this down. Let me see here. Let me just escape and get out of this. Is it letting me? Is it letting me? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we're going to bring this down. 
And we're go oh, this is still here. What the heck? All right, let's see. Let me erase. I swear it brings us. Um, okay. So here. Now we are going to look at, um, let me get the arrow again. We're going to look at all of this. Do you see all of these planets in Aquarius right now? Um, this is what's going on for Aquarius. So if somebody who has an Aries rising, an Aries, this is the sign of Aries right here. If somebody has an, you see this line? That's your ascendant sign. You see this line? That's your descendant sign. This is your partner, this is your partnership house. This over here is your house. This is your partner's house. This is your income, a partner's income, okay? So we'll get more into this. Right now, all of these, if you're an Aries rising, all these planets are in your 11th house, so groups, friends, and organizations, right? So, um, you know, it just looks to me like if you're an Aries rising, you have a lot going on with your friends, groups, and organizations in your life. It's a major focus, right? That's what I'm seeing here. Now, also what's important to know, let me just go here. And, okay, um, let me see. All right, let me see here, drawing. I'm sorry, I'm trying to erase my arrow here. Okay. All right, so here's the thing. Um, I don't know why it's not letting me. Let me see. Click escape several times. Okay, so this is you. This is your house now. Let's say if you were, um, let's say if you each of these houses. I want to point this out. Each of these pieces of pie, and I'm going to bring up my this chart right here. Each of these pieces of pie is 30 degrees based on equal house systems. Now, when you use your chart. Your houses are not going to be 30 degrees each, okay? You're going to have some degrees that are more, some degrees less, a piece of pie that's huge. Everyone's different. But basically, each of these houses are approximately 30 degrees, right? Okay, so what you're going to do, okay, if you're looking at the rising sign, so let's say somebody who's a Virgo or ascendant, Virgo rising, you're going to go 150 degrees out and look, and here's a Virgo rising. You see that ascendant sign is a Virgo. And they have all of these planets in Aquarius in their sixth house. So their sixth house of work, health, and day-to-day -day activities is really lit up like a Christmas tree, right? So this is important to know what houses you're dealing with in your chart. When you look at a natal chart, it's going to look probably like this. And you're going to see exactly... Um, what house is being affected based on where the planets are, right? Now you also have to look at the aspects. Do you see these little lines here? I'm going to get my, um, let me see. All right. I'm going to get, can you see my mouse? Let me see. Um, ba -ba. All right, let's see. Let me see. Okay. Do you see the lines here? And maybe I'm going to go and get this. Uh, my arrow again. Do you see the lines? This is a green line. This green line is an inconjunct. It looks like a little K in between. And this means it is five signs apart. This is not houses. It's five signs. So let's see that this is, this is one degree Sagittarius, right? One degree Sag, right there, right? Then you're going to count one degree Capricorn. It's one sign. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm sorry. We start here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I had it right. Okay, so do you see how it's in conjunct Uranus? The moon is in conjunct Uranus, right? So what does that mean? That means there needs to be some sort of an adjustment. In conjunct means adjustment. Five signs away. Not houses, it's signs. So you have an adjustment, unexpected things with stability and security and maybe something legal for um, Virgos having to do with home and family or having to unexpected things to do with security and stability of people and places at a distance having to do with home and family and maybe a woman or a female. 
there needs to be some sort of an adjustment. You see that? Okay, now we're going to look at the trine. Chiron is right here, and we have the moon right here. Now, the trines are four signs away. So we, got, we start here. We're going to go one, two, three, four signs away. Do you see Chiron's right there? Okay, it's within a 10-degree orb. So this is one degree Sag, and this is six degrees Aries. So that's four signs away. Four signs away is a trine, something that comes with ease, a lucky break, you know. It's lucky. It's with ease. Now, these, this it means that there's maybe a chance to emotionally heal something within a family situation, maybe to deal with a wound or a hurt. You're helping heal maybe a family situation. There's an opportunity. You know, things may be able to be healed here. I'm seeing that, okay? So, and a sextile is two signs away. So we're going to look at this is sextiling to Venus, right? Um, okay, so here this is moon is one degree. This, okay, that's Sag, and we go to Capricorn, that's one sign, and Aquarius is two signs. So sextile is two signs away. That means there's an opportunity here, right? There is an opportunity to work um, with, with, I'm sorry, there's an opportunity with home and children or creative projects and romantic situations. There's an opportunity there. It's what it's showing based on if you're an early degree Virgo rising, okay? So what is a square? Now we have here... Um, Moon is square. That's three signs away, right? Moon, uh, okay, we got one, two, and three. So moon is square Mercury because Mercury is almost in Pisces. It's 23 degrees. Remember, we're working at a 10-degree orb, right? So three signs away, Mercury. So this means that there's going to be difficult communications when it comes to home and family with work and daily -day activities. There could be some difficulty with communication, right? So squares are difficulty. Uh, it makes things hard to get to, right? Try something comes with ease. It's, it's a lucky uh, aspect. It's a good aspect. Um, sextiles are an opportunity. So sometimes if you see a lot of squares, you want to find out where the sextiles are to give you information as to overcome what are opportunities for you to overcome that square, right? Now, if it's this, if there's something on the opposite end of something, it's called an opposition, right? Opposition is, is difficult. It brings a, a something is an opposition. It, it's opposing you, right? So that's what an opposition is. A good aspect is a trine or a sextile. A biquintile is magical ability or a quintile, but I won't go into that right now because it's more difficult. But um, squares are difficult aspects, right? And you want to look for sextiles when you see squares. So if you see three signs away, that is a square. Two signs away. And it don't, don't confuse that with houses. It's signs itself. You're counting degrees and you're looking at the signs themselves, okay? So this tells you exactly kind of what's going on. So Virgo rising people right now, there's, a, you know, there's an opportunity for them to work with when it comes to their status, to increase their status through communication, right? Because Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mercury's communication. Do you see Mercury is trining this right here? The sun is also trining. So lighting and showcasing something at work and through your day-to-day -day activities, through Aquarian energy, innovation, internet, right? Um, reaching people at a distance, Uranus. You see that right there? Um, so there's a trine here too with sun, north node. You see that? Now when it comes to um, Pluto, uh, yeah, Pluto. Uh, when it comes to Pluto, we see here that there could be um, there an inconjunct, meaning that there needs to be an adjustment, a transformation, a change, right? So do you see kind of how we're reading? Now I'm going to show you something else. Let me just go back here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you see how um, that, that is done that way. You, I, I hope I'm making this not so confusing, right? So that's how we learn aspects. So you learn this, you were learning the chart wheel, okay? And you're learning what these houses mean, right? And you're going to have planets in there, and there are going to be different signs for you, right? Learning what those mean first, and then looking at the aspects, right? 
Transits comes after this. Transits comes later. You're also going to need to know the glyphs. You see the sun? It's seen by this glyph, the sun. Let me get my arrow again. Arrow. Okay, here you see the sun? Here's Venus. It looks like a hangman. Saturn looks like an H with a T on it. Pluto. Sometimes Pluto can be seen as a P, like a letter P. Chiron, the wounded healer. This is where somebody would have wounds in their chart, and they use these wounds to help others in some way, shape, or form. The Midhaven. The Midhaven is your pinnacle of your career, where your career, your, your status. It's the pinnacle of your status, where it starts, right? I'm not going to get into all these. Okay, moon. Um, your emotions, how you handle your emotions. This is the moon. This is the symbol for the moon. And it's also the symbol for mother. Uh, in the chart too. It represents mom. The sun and, and represents father. So can Saturn. Saturn can represent dad too. Okay. We have Mars here. Mars is your action, your energy. But Mars is also what you're, if you're a woman, it's what you're interested in a man. So we often look at Mars as to, okay, what, what really makes this girl, like, what is she attracted to, right? And Venus is how you flirt. Venus is how a girl flirts. Now, for Venus, Venus is what men want in a dating partner, and Mars is how they flirt. It's opposite. Uranus is where you, you see ups and downs in a chart, where you see unexpected things happening, ups and downs, right? North node is where you're meant to go in this life. South node is what you're, this is the south node right here. South node is what you're leaving behind in this life, right? All right, so I'm going to skip these. Mercury. Mercury is how you communicate. How do you communicate? Are you a sensitive communicator? Are you empathetic? Are you nurturing? Or are you aggressive? Are you assertive? Are you a no-nonsense communicator? You take emotion out of it altogether. You look at all that. Jupiter, the planet of expansion, gifts, and luck. You want to see where you have that in your natal chart. Neptune is where things could be confusing. Uh, Neptune is where things are confusing. Or Neptune is also, it's the planet of illusion and delusion. But it's also the planet of um, creativity and spirituality, right? So you want to look at, in Neptune, wherever you have Pisces in your chart is where you serve or suffer, right? And you look to Neptune to get more information on that, right? South Node is what you're leaving behind in this life. You're not bringing with you. Juno is the marriage partner. Where's your marriage partner symbol in your natal chart? Find that out, right? Ascendant is your rising sign. That is who you are as a person, the time of your birth. It rules how people see you in the world. And then when they get to know you, they see your son, your soul, your soul level. And they really get to know you, they see how you handle your emotions, right? Right. When you look at a chart, sometimes you can see how somebody handles their emotions and what's the relationship with mom. Also, the son, um, what's the relationship with dad like in their chart? You could see that too in the chart, right? So you're also going to need to learn these symbols right here. This is a symbol for Aries. This is a symbol for Cancer. It looks like a six and a nine. This is a symbol for Libra, Capricorn. This is a symbol for Taurus. This is a symbol for Leo. It looks like a squiggly line. The symbol for Scorpio is almost the, the symbol for Virgo. It's very similar, right? It's, um, it's like an M with a little devil's hook on it, right? Because you see Virgo, it's very similar. But Virgo's with an M that swoops inward, okay? Aquarius are two squiggly lines. Gemini is almost like the Roman numeral for two. Okay, um, this is Virgo. Here's Sag. It's like a line with an arrow. Uh, here's Pisces, the symbol for Pisces, right? Okay, conjunctions. Conjunctions, let me pull up my other chart here, can I? Let me see. Let's talk about, we talked about squares. We talked about in conjuncts where you need to make uh, adjustments. Quintiles are magical ability. Oppositions where things are difficult, right? That's the symbol. This is a symbol for square in conjunct. Q for quintile. Let me see. Oppositions is here. Semi-sextiles. Semi-sextile is when it's two signs apart, remember? Semi-square. This means it's almost a square, but there's a little bit of difficulty, right? Sex, um, this is sex, uh, semi-sextiles, and here's sextile. Semi-sextiles is only one sign away. A sextile is two signs away. It's where you're going to have an opportunity, right? Trying is something that comes with ease, right? Um, yes, and this is a symbol for sextiles. Septiles is this one. It almost looks like sextiles. Um, okay, I'm not going to go into all these. It's more complicated. Okay, we didn't talk about conjunctions, and I want to 
touch base on conjunctions for you. All right, let me see. Um, oh, wait. Mouse. Okay, here we go. Why am I, why am I not getting this? Um, okay, this should be working now. All right, so I want to talk to you a little bit about conjunctions. Now, talk about conjunctions. Do you see this? Let me get my mouse again. This is going to drive me insane. Okay, here we go. Do you see this? Saturn, Venus is f 5 degrees Saturn, and Saturn is 5 degrees. In Aquarius, these two are conjunct, right? Now, this is these are two close planets. They're conjunct. So today, people may feel a lack of love or a lack of money or restriction with love or money or very serious. It could be karmic with love and our money, right? Pluto's right here. This brings transformation, right? Change. Uh, an ending or a transformation. Now we have Jupiter conjunct the sun. When Jupiter is exactly conjunct the sun, it's considered the luckiest day of the year. Now we have that lucky day of the year, and that was uh, the last full moon we had in Leo. Okay, same day. The sun was exact conjunct to Jupiter. But right now it is still in conjunct to Jupiter, bringing expansion of growth, uh, gifts and luck, and highlighting something there, right? And it's also, sun is also conjunct Mercury. Um, and this is a uh, six-degree orb, right? So there's a focus on communications right now, too, right? So these are all what's called conjunctions within a 17 degrees. I want to talk to you a little bit about something called Kazemi. If something is like these two, Saturn and Venus are exactly um, five degrees. But do you see the minutes? Saturn is 50 minutes and Venus is 16 minutes. Um, this is not exactly, this is, you know, Kazemi would be 70 minutes. And I should use, when I use the term Kazemi, I should use the sun. Uh, when the sun was conjunct Jupiter, it was actually Kazemi, the sun, I believe it was Kazemi Jupiter. So if a child was born on a day where the sun is conjunct Jupiter, that's the luckiest day of the year. It's great for their natal chart. And if it was Kazemi, meaning it was within 17 minutes of that exact degree, that is all that's like being the heart of God. Whether you have Venus, so th that child would embody Jupiter. It would embody uh, the attributes of Jupiter, expansion, growth, gifts, and luck, right? Now, if your son is con conjunct Venus, that is also Kazemi. If, if it is exact degree within 17 minutes, you're going to look at the minutes now. So if within 17 minutes, it's considered in the heart of God. It's not exactly burned by the sun's rays. However, if your son is conjunct, um, Venus, it is being harmed by the sun's rays, and you could have some difficulty with love and relationships and money, but usually people who have sun conjunct Venus are very good-looking people, they're usually attractive. Now, somebody who has sun conjunct Jupiter, there could be um, a lot of growth, a lot of expansion, but can Jupiter be burned by the sun if it's not Cassini? Yes, I believe so. Um, same thing with Mars. Mars can, well, Mars actually is already a hot planet, <laughs> you know. So anyway, you get the idea with the conjunction and the sun and the, the term Kazemi within 17 minutes, same degree, okay? All right, so that's that. And uh, now let's, this is really good question. You have Uranus here and you have Mars here. Uranus is 6 degrees Taurus, Mars is 15. Is that conjunct? Is that conjunct? Yeah, it is. It's within, it's within a 10 degree orb. If you're using 10 degree orbs, then yes, it would be, it would be conjunct, you know? So that's that. Okay, let me get my mouse back. All right, so we got that. Okay, great. So let me, so we kind of see, Ava, this is the term conjunction. You see that? And that's the symbol for it. You will need to learn and memorize these symbols. They're called glyphs in astrology. They're called the ast astrology glyphs. And you see on my page here, um, and behind this, you see those lines? Okay, you see the, the you see the lines and the symbols. Those are the glyphs. You see Gemini is all the way up on top there. Um, those are the astrology glyphs. All right, let me see what I got here. So that's what we have. Um, so also it's important to know the meaning of each sign, right? And what the houses mean, and then the meaning of all the planets, right? So the sun is your vitality. 
your who or you are at a soul level, right? It also shows a focus in your life, right? Venus is love, it's money, right? Um, Saturn is restriction, limitation, lack. It, it can also bring where we spend a long time learning something to move forward in our life, right? Pluto brings transformation, but over time. Chiron is something where we feel wounded in our life and use those wounds to help other people. Moon, I said, is mother and it's your emotions. Mars is your action, right? Mars is your action, and if you're a female, it's what you're interested in a man. In a man, it's how you use that energy and also how you flirt. Your masculine energy can also show your libido, right? Oh, by the way, speaking of houses and intimacy, eighth house, your eighth house is the house of intimacy, but if you look at the sign of the planets in it, it could tell you what someone's interested in on an intimate level, okay, just so you know. Um, Uranus is what ups and downs. Uranus is innovation. It rules aviation, right? It rules ups and downs, unexpected things, right? Um, yes, but it also rules, uh, like if it's in your second house, it's like maybe you might have peaks and values, values with money, but also it means that you could make money on the internet or in innovative ways, right? Wherever your north node is, it's your focus in this lifetime, right? Your south node is what you're getting away from, but you're going to use tools from your south node to, to help you within your north node. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to use tools from that south node to help you get to your north node. All right. Now, Mercury is your communication, how you communicate, and Jupiter is where you're going to bring expansion, growth, gifts, and luck into your life. Neptune is where there could be confusion or where you're a service to others. It could be Neptune. Um, but it could be confusion or could spirituality, creativity, Neptune. Those are all Neptune. Um, South Node, as we talked about, is what you're getting away from. Juno is your marriage partner. You know, look at Juno to figure out where you may meet your marriage partner or more information on the marriage partner. Ascendant is how people see you right when they first meet you. Like, oh, hi, you know, how are, you know, and they get a vibe from you right away just by looking at you, right? That is your ascendant, okay? So anyway, this is my little intro to astrology. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope I didn't confuse you more than it was. Um, I saw a few other people putting up these videos, and I'm like, that's not correct, <laughs> you know, that's not right. So anyway, anyway, I hope I break it down to you, and I hope I break aspects down in a way that's understand, easily to understand. I think that when you're looking at aspects, and by aspect I mean the square, the trine, the conjunction, opposition, if you're learning all of those, try to you learn using a 10-degree orb, okay? Use 10 degrees and count Signs away. Don't count houses. You're counting the signs. So Aries to Taurus would be one. Taurus to Gemini is two. And you're looking at the degrees at the same time. So within the 10 degree mark, and then you're counting the signs. I hope that's helpful to you. It's the easy way to learn aspects, right? And then, um, you know, when we're looking at, let me see if I can pull something up for you here. Hold on one second. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can pull this up. Oh, wait. Hold on. Um, I'm going to pull this up and see if I can show you something. Ava. I'm going to see if I can show you. I'm going to show you transits really fast. I'm going to shut her door because she's being horrible. Okay, so we're, if we're looking at transits, right? All right, let's see. Uh, let me see. So let's say here. Um, there's the here and now. This is where the transits are, but I'm going to try something else. Um, by wheel, okay. All right, do you see the inside wheel? Do you see the inside chart? And I'm going to get rid of this right now. Okay, do you see the in oh man, the hell and the sand. Anyway, the inside chart. Um the inside chart is your birth chart, right? And then the outside chart are the transits. And I'm gonna choose somebody that I don't know. Uh, let me see, designs. This is just a random person. Okay. Um, okay. Let me just get out of this. This this and get out of this. Okay, here we go. 
So here's the chart. You see the middle chart is the natal chart, and the outside chart is the transits, right? Now, I can tell by looking at him that his seventh house, his seventh house is lit up like a Christmas tree, right? I can totally see that. I can see that his Saturn is in his seventh house of relationships, so I already know he's going through a difficult time in relationships, right? Saturn brings restriction, difficulty, right? Uranus brings ups and downs. Do you see how status, Saturn, um, duh. Do you see how Uranus is in his 10th house, creating ups and downs in his status, right? And with Mars conjunct Uranus, you know, there could have been some unexpected action taken, uh, you know, maybe a breakup or something that happened quickly, right? Um, so you see this here, Mars, Uranus. Somebody may want liberation and freedom in their status here, right? Neptune could be what's confusing, right? or I'm not seeing it clearly, or either he's compassionate about something or he's not seeing it clearly. This is his eighth house when it comes to joint resources. I would tell him, if he says, I just had a breakup, I would say to him, and it's ninth house legal, I would say make sure you have a lawyer looking everything over because Neptune in the ninth house, maybe you don't see things clearly or there's something you may be missing, so have another set of eyes and look at that, right? I would also say Mercury conjunct Sun, there's a focus on joint resources and joint income. You know, he may be looking at, you know, maybe um, taxes or uh, joint resources, especially if he's getting divorced, right? Um, yes. And the restriction. So he may be looking at alimony and child support, something like this, as Mercury can approaches the Sun conjunct Saturn, right? Um, Saturn in his seventh house, do you see? We're looking at he feels restricted from love and or money with a partner right now. There's a transformation within his relationships, right? And But there's opportunity for new growth and expansion within the relationship, too, with Jupiter there. So he could meet somebody new. What is he emotional about today? He could be very emotional when it comes to his children, creative projects, romantic situations. You know what I'm saying? So you see how I'm looking at the houses here? And I'm, I'm looking, and you see, that's enough. Do you see how the south node is conjunct his moon? He's getting away from something with children, creative projects. It, it, he's getting away from something, a romantic situation from a woman, and it's going to help him when it's his status. It's trining his status, right? So Mercury conjunct yeah. Jupiter. There's a lot of communication, and it could be unexpected because Uranus is activating that Mercury-Jupiter. Do you see that? So anyway, this is just some information. This is These are transits. Okay, this outer this outer circle are the transits. The inner circle is the natal chart. And the transits is what activates those things going on in the natal chart. So when you study astrology, you're able to look at someone's chart and say, wow, I can see what they may go through in life or what their personality is like. But you're going to see these things come to life when these planets hit these natal planets and it activates them. And it causes this person to act this out or however they're going to be, you know what I mean? And some people say, "Do I remember seeing a person who's studying astrology and she's doing videos and she's saying, oh, we don't have free will. And I'm like, yes, you do. And how do I mean that? All right, when you look at your chart and you look at the second house Leo, which is great to have second house Leo. And by the way, if this person had a 29 degree cancer rising or, yeah, and 29 Capricorn, that'd be a millionaire's aspect, by the way. But anyway, um, yeah, so Leo in the second house, this person may be doing something in the public eye for money or whatever. Um, and we're going to look at, yeah, the sun is in their, is in their midhaven. You see in the middle chart, the sun is in the midhaven. So this person could be seen in, in the public or what have you. It could be. Um, but they're getting away from fifth house north node. They're working toward groups and organization with the north node and Gemini, the transiting North Node. Their natal North Node is 12th house. So they're working on solitude and being kind of private. And they're getting away from their work and day-to-day -day activities with the South Node and Capricorn in their natal chart. The middle chart is what I'm looking at. Now we look at the outer overlay. And these things activate certain things for this person right now. And, you know, when I talk about free will, somebody who has their second house Leo right? And there's, you know, um, sixth house Sagittarius and 10th house Aries. Well, this could be somebody who's in the military, somebody who's into, um, goes to foreign lands or somebody who, uh, you know, I feel like this. Um, 
Jupiter. This could also be, you know, this person could have a government job, something like that, right? So, okay, so I'm looking at this, right? And do I feel like this person would, I'm just looking at this, somebody with this kind of transits, is this somebody who is going to work at a hospital? I mean, unless he's a, he's a doctor, because Leo can be doctors. Um, I'm looking at something. Okay, is this going to be a massage therapist? Is this person going to be a masseuse? Hell no. Because, you know, could they be a doctor? Maybe. Um, could they be in the public eye? Yeah, could be. Could they be in politics? Yes. Could they work for the government? Possibly. All of these things are possible with Leo ruling the second, Sag ruling the sixth, and Aries ruling the tenth, right? And Venus, um, natal Venus is, where is the natal Venus? Okay, is in the eleventh house of groups and organizations, right? So, um, can this person be doing all of these things? Yes. Um, but is somebody massage therapist going to have a Leo second house, Sag? Not really. Not so much. Um, you know, Aries rules military, rules sharp objects, you know, uh, things like this. Um, is this person, I'm going to say here, uh, do, is this person going to be an astrologer? No, not, not really. I'm not seeing a lot of Aquarius, a lot of Scorpio, a lot of Pisces, you know. No, I'm not feeling like this person is going to be an astrologer. So I feel this person has many other career avenues to go into, but masseuse or astrologer is not one of them. You know, do I feel this person is a detective? No, I don't. You know, so do you have free will to a point? You can choose many fields based on, you know, Leo can rule many things. Leo rules authority figures. It rules doctors. It rules a, a jeweler, like a gemologist, a jeweler. Um, Leo rules, you know, authority figures. It also rules government, right? So this person could be a doctor, a jeweler. You know, working for the government, yes. Politics, yes. Uh, masseuse, no. Psychologist, no, not so much. So there are ways, you do have free will within a point. So somebody saying you don't have free will, that's bullshit. You do. It's just like saying a nurse, uh, somebody who has aspects in the chart to become a nurse, are they also going to be, um, you know, a musical movie star, a mu musical, a musician, or like a pop star? Not really, you know. Oh, by the way, um, being on TV, being a you know seen, and that's Leo, very much Leo energy. Actors and actresses, Leo energy, right? Very much Leo. That's not somebody, um, you know. I'm just saying, somebody who has a lot of nerd, like a, somebody with second house, sixth house, and tenth house, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, which would be nursing or something, probably. Um, are they going to be, you know? For their career, are they going to be, you know, I don't know. A Whitney Houston, probably not. Do you see what I'm saying? So you have to look at what's in those houses, where those rulerships lie, where Venus is. All of these things matter. You do have free will to a point, right, to a point. So anyway, that's, I was looking at that. She said, oh, we don't have free will. Our chart's pretty much done. And I'm like, no. No, here's the thing. That's why, okay, I'm going to give you also a, um, a chart, and I don't have it in front of me, but I want to talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about, um, when I was in learning astrology, I learned about octaves. You can operate in a high octave or a low octave in astrology. It doesn't matter what your chart looks like, right? So we take the chart of Hitler, which, can, which his chart showed that he could have been a great leader. Great. But he chose to operate on the low octave, right? And he chose, chose to, um, you know, do some terrible things, as you all know, what he did, right? So he had opportunities to do the right things, but he didn't. He operated on the low octave in his chart, and now he's not known to be such a great person, right? And it, actually, people say he's one of the worst people that lived, right? For everything he's done and all the murders and killings that he's done, right? So... Everyone in their chart, somebody who says you don't have free will at all, that's fucking bullshit because anybody can use their chart for good or bad. The opportunity is there. You can use your chart to, this person could be in politics. They could be, maybe they're like working for the government and they decide, oh, you know what, I kind of want to run for something. And they could. 
um, could they, you know, they could be well known in their career, right? Yeah, they, they could very well be well known. Could they, could they um, be on TV? Yeah, very much so. With Leo ruling the second house, right? Um, but if this, if you said to this person, oh, um, are you going to be a massage therapist? Not the chart is not showing that. Do you know what I'm saying? So that part, I mean, they would not have inclinations to maybe thrive in that field. You know what I'm saying? So do you have free will to a point? There's many careers he could, he, this person could go in and be really successful. Other careers, it, 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 this chart doesn't show anything. It doesn't even show that would be an option. I mean, if he went into a massage, he probably wouldn't like it and quit. You know? So, I mean, to a point you have free will. Right? But as far as doing good or evil, everybody has that choice because there's called working at the higher octave of your chart or the lower octave. The higher octave of Pisces is spirituality and creativity. The low octave of Pisces is drug abuse, alcohol abuse, all tuning out of life. Right? The high octave. The high octave of Pisces is, you know, being, a, what do you call it, a preacher, right? Wanting to be in touch with God, right? And the, no, the negative active of Pisces, too, is also lying, being dishonest, deceptive, bringing illusions in front of people, right? So that's the, the negative side of Pisces and the positive side of Pisces, right? And the same thing for each and every sign has a negative and positive energy to Pisces or Neptune, right? So, I mean, Virgo can be analytical, detail-oriented, um, organized, efficient. The negative side of Virgo is overly critical of others to the point where they could be nasty with communication, right? So you want to look at that, you know. Aries, the high end of Aries could be um, being an officer, being uh, in the military, uh, taking care of others, right? The low octave of Aries is overly controlling, using abuse of power. Um, you know, using control in the wrong way, using weapons in a wrong way, because Aries does roll the sign of weaponry, right? In the tarot, Aries is the emperor, right? But reversed, it's the emperor reversed. It's overuse of power and control. Each sign and planet has a positive and negative sign, right? Libra is all about balance and harmony and relationships. But how many Libras do you know that are balanced? Their whole mission in life is to find balance, to find balance and harmony. That's their goal, sun, Libra, right? And how many Libras do you know, moon, rising, they have an issue with being alone, can't stand being by themselves, hate it, right? So every sign has a good positive and negative uh, attribute. Gemini, I can do more than one thing at a time. I can multitask, right? And Gemini and Libra both have this thing, hard to make a decision. Hard to make a decision. And Geminis can multitask, but they can also talk. My dad would call it speaking with a forked tongue, meaning saying one thing, doing another, or talking out of both sides of your ass. You know what I'm saying? S saying this and doing something else. Not every Gemini is going to do that, but can Geminis do that? Yeah. They're really good at reading their audience, telling them what they want to hear. But that's the negative side of Gemini. Not every Gemini is going to be operating on the negative side. Do you see what I'm saying? So saying that you have no free will is bullshit. Saying that you're tied to one fucking career until you die is bullshit. Totally. Because who, who has one career their entire life? Nobody. I was listening to this YouTube video and I'm thinking, I better make a video too because I'm like, this is fucking wrong. <laughs> you know, don't tell people you have no choices in life and this is the way it is, you know. I don't even think this person is a, was a real astrologer. I don't know. Anyway. I was listening to the video, I'm like, oh yeah, and people watch you, and this is scary. So anyway, I just thought I'd do this video. I hope you find it helpful, and I may do a video on how to do a solar return properly. I might do that. And if you want to do, if you want me to look at your natal chart or do a relationship reading for you, let me know. They're on sale right now, and I will also look at, um, teach you how I do a relationship chart, okay, what we look at in relationships and see how your plans affect another person. You know what I mean? So anyway, I hope this video was interesting. I hope it helps you. And it clears up some things. You do have free will. 
you can choose to be bad or good. It's it's not written and predestined in your chart that you're going to be you're going to grow up to be a loser asshole who hates people and who's negative and who's a, who's an ass you know whatever. Think of uh, Christmas Scrooge, right? Was he always negative and mean? No, he really wanted to be nice, right? I mean, everybody has that in their chart where you could be negative or you could be positive, right? So and Pete, like, look at Hitler's chart. And look at, I forgot who else we had in our astrology class. It was another man. We had this chart. And both were great leaders. It's just Hitler chose to use his aspects in a real negative way. So, anyway, we all have that in our chart. It's not predisposed that somebody is a born asshole. Or you're born to be a piece of crap. No. No. They can change if they want to. You know what I mean? So, anyway, we all have free will. And I'm not, and those of you who are Virgo right now who tend to date science projects, and no, no offense, I mean, I have a Virgo rising too, but if you tend to date people with issues all the time, and you know that somebody's had an issue, and your Virgos are the people who give people the benefit of the doubt, and the doubt, and the benefit, the benefit, the benefit of the doubt over and over again, thinking, oh, they're going to change. I'm not saying that this person's going to change, Virgo. I'm saying that everybody has an opportunity to, to do good in their life. However, if they're a certain age, people don't really change. So if you're a Virgo rising and you waited for somebody to get their head out of their ass and respect you and treat you the way you needed to be treated and they haven't done it yet, they're over 35, move on. My advice. Move on. Because you can't change somebody unless they want to change, you know, and it's not okay to wait around waiting for a bus that isn't coming. All right? So anyway... Astrology is a very helpful tool, and I hope this helps you. Anyway, if you want to go more into my classes, I have classes on uh, on, the, on sale right now on the website, so take advantage of those, astrology and tarot. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.